morning. Uh, today we are going to have a session on uh, studies and practices, particularly on philosophy. And our colleague uh, Mr. Rajiv is going to speak on that. Let's see how he has understood and how he is going to make it uh, useful in his classroom teaching. Shall we? Yes. Good. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Rama. I'll start with section one. I'll be discussing two sections today. Section one would be philosophy, and the second section would be organization. Um, can I have the first slide, please? Okay. Um, this section basically discusses about the educational beliefs and values that reflect IB uh, philosophy. The first point that is very important that the mission statement and the philosophy of the school should be aligned with the philosophy and mission of IB. They should uh, make perfect sense. Uh, if there is no uh, match in them, it would be very difficult for the school to understand what they are trying to do. Uh, which brings me to the next point. <coughs> the governing body administrative and pedagogi pedagogi pedagogical logical leaders uh, should also have a good understanding about the IBS philosophies as well as the teachers who are also teaching and the students. Basically everyone in the community should have a very good understanding of the philosophy. Uh, because the school community, they will be demonstrating their understanding of and their commitment to the program. So without that kind of commitment, you cannot actually implement this program. The standards and the practices, they help us implementing the diploma program. So this is just the guideline that we have to follow to implement it. Just a second, to speak on uh, the second point he has given, the governing body actually refers to the governors of the institution, the trustees, precisely. Administrative and pedagogical leadership actually refers to the program coordinator. And staff refers to teaching as well as non-teaching staff. They should equally play important role of delivering IB programs, be it BOIP or MOIP or DP. Okay, that's it. Okay, the next point, the school also develops and promotes international mindedness and all attributes of the IB learner profile across the school community. Which means uh, the community includes all the stakeholders, uh, the students, parents, teachers, board of directors, um, everyone in the community basically. So, and we started from the very young age, from PYP, MYP they have a very good idea. So when they come to diploma courses, they actually know about it. So it's very easy for us to promote it as we have been developing it from a very young age. Can I have the next slide please? Uh, the school also promotes responsible action within and beyond the school community, which means um, within school, whatever they are doing, we can monitor it. But as an IB person, uh, they should also have an understanding so that they can use it in every spread of their life. Um, so when they are um, communicating with uh, people from other communities, not IB community of our school, um, they can still promote the IB ways. Um, open communication based on understanding and respect. Respect is very important as we have to respect everyone's opinion. And that's what uh, open-mindedness and international mindedness and uh, IB is all about. So, um, the school places importance on language learning, different types of languages, uh, not only the mother tongue, but the second language and additional languages. Um, that could be English, French, Spanish, those language courses are there. And we also participate in IB community, world community. When we go to OCC, there are different types of forums for different subject teachers where they can go and discuss um, about their subject matters with a teacher from another continent. And they can get a solution from someone else. Um, as a new teacher, we all got help from the forums. Whenever we had questions, they actually helped us a lot, understanding it better. Uh, 
So I think that that's the philosophical part. Can we move to the next step? Okay, the requirement in general that uh, when we provide the full DP, it uh, has in students who not only go for individual courses, but the core program, combining all the courses. And uh, this is an educational experience that we provide the students, get the benefit out of it. And we encourage the students to attend for the full diploma, not only the courses. That including the core, three things in the core. Um, next section is the organization. This is also a very important part. Uh, this actually tells us how we are prepared. With, without the organization, we cannot actually implement IT. Um, and this will tell us why. The first standard, B1, it talks about leadership and structure. Those are very two vital um, points because the leadership, they decide how others will follow. So if uh, there is not proper planning, things will not go smoothly. Um, first of all, the school has developed systems to keep governing body informed about the ongoing implementation and development of the program because without their approval and their support, we cannot continue. So whenever we're implementing something, we're making small changes, some developments are there, we have to inform them so that they are well informed. Um, and there should be a governance and leadership structure, an organogram basically, that supports the implementation of program. So for example, if someone in the organogram needs something, that person knows who he has to reach to get it done. Okay, for subject teachers, they might have a um, head of the department who can help them. Um, in other cases, the DP coordinator is always there. If we are dealing with the core, there are um, coordinators for extended essay, for TOK, and CAS. So we all know who we have to go and see when we have a specific problem. So basically, when we have a governance and leadership structure, then we know what we have to do. Um, the head of school or principal and the program coordinators, they demonstrate pedagogical leadership aligned with the philosophy of the program. So the leadership is aligned with the philosophy of the program. That means we cannot just come up with a leadership. It has to be aligned with the program, philosophy of the program. So therefore, we have to know uh, that the coordinators, they all report to the diploma coordinators, DP coordinator, and uh, all the subjects, they are directly in, uh, related to the course. So there, there is a structure basically, so we know what we have to do. Next slide, please. Um, as I said, when we have those coordinators, including DP coordinator, CAS, TOK, and extended essay coordinator, they are uh, given specific jobs. The job is well defined, the description is there so that the person involved has a clear idea about what they have to do and the support and resources that they need to do it. And because it's a very responsible position, without uh, a clear definition of the job, it would be very difficult for them to carry the task. Um, and we also develop, the school develops uh, policies and procedures that support the program. Well, this is where the coordinators also play a vital role. The policies and procedures, they go through the current practices and uh, the IB way, developing a good understanding about it, then come up with policies that are implemented later on. Um, the school has system in place for continuity and ongoing developments. So whatever we do, the make changes we make, it has to have some continuation. It cannot be like uh, one day we are thinking about something and the next day we are planning something else. So there should be a continuation so that we know we are taking small steps to reach the final destination that is implementing the idea. Um, and also the school carries out program evaluation involving all stakeholders so that we can uh, evaluate ourselves and understand what we are doing right, what we are not doing right, and fix it whenever needed. The seventh point actually refers to a school that has already started implementing the program and uh, 
completing fifth year so this evaluation is done once in every five years normally so this is not for us as we are starting the program uh, getting us to the school authorized so the seventh point is not for us next slide please Okay, for the next section, may I invite uh, Ms. Farhana to come and continue? Uh, thank you, Mr. Rajiv. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Farhana, and I'll be looking at one of the most important requirements for in order to make sure that we're able to achieve a successful program. That is resources and support. Obviously, without your resources, you can't do anything. So the first most important thing in order to make sure you have resources is your funding. The governing body makes sure that there is enough fund for so that they could provide you with adequate resources and also adequate resources for um, for your um, for all your courses and especially as well as your CAS, your creativity and action and service program, as well as the CAS coordinator. And also there should be a uh, allocation of funds for resources in order to implement theory of the knowledge for the two years. Then after that, um, obviously we have our funds, so with the funds we'll have to make sure we have qualified staff in order to have a successful uh, program. And after we have our qualified staff, we also make sure that the school has to ensure that all the teachers are IB. Trained. I just need to elaborate on this. Qualified means what? Trained. The first development means what? How, how these two points are related? Um, um, IB, um, uh, by professional development, we mean by different teaching methods, concurrency of learning, and. and <laughs> <laughs> to make it better, clarifying. The first point, this point number two, refers to school yeah, provides qualified staff, meaning academic, the discipline that one is specialized with. And the next point deals with uh, IB recognized profession development is actually the training given by IB, be it online workshop or face-to-face -face workshop. So these two should be there to become an IB teaching practitioner. Okay. Then after that, the school provides separate dedicated time for the teachers to come together for collaborative planning. Their subject wise and then bringing all the subjects together and how to implement theory of knowledge into this. So all these planning should be done in a separate time. Vertical planning and horizontal planning. Um, uh, the school also makes sure that there is a physical and a virtual learning environment and specialized equipment, like for example, laboratories for the science subjects, for IT, uh, for mainly group four and six subjects, separate separate uh, environment for your art and your other subjects, and information, and you have separate labs for your IT, and also they should have separate uh, storage, uh, secured system for, keep, for making sure that the exam papers are secured and with Minimum access. It's very important to have a safe, fireproof place to keep the IB documents. And when she talked about physical and virtual learning environments, it refers to library, digital library and physical library. You get the books, hard copies, as well as digital copies. That's very, very important uh, to facilitate learning, more effective learning. Right. Um, just mentioning this, uh, uh, continuing this point, the library, uh, these are the other requirements of the library and the media center. So there has to be uh, enough resourceful library for the students to take, uh, to take help from the library in order to make sure, to prepare for the extended essay and their other work throughout the program. Um, the school ensures access to information on global issues and diverse perspective, um, easy access to the whole world, internet access to that, theory of knowledge, global theory issues, of knowledge, and theory of knowledge, implementing theory of knowledge. The school provides staff for its students with learning, special education needs. So the, the school also provides other support for people, for students who have special needs, and also inclusive education. It refers to inclusive education. As well as support for your teachers. Yes. Uh, next slide. I think they are. Yes. Um, the students 
schedule. Uh, this, uh, the school has system in place to guide and counsel students in the program for career counseling. The school should have a separate career counselor for uh, make, uh, to guide them throughout the throughout their time over here and to advise them what to go for. Okay, thank you.